Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video on No Man's Sky. You know, it's a game that came out in 2016 and has seen one of the greatest rebounds of all time, I would say, in video games. Uh, maybe not, actually maybe not as good as Rainbow Six Siege, but slowly but surely, I think No Man's Sky is becoming like this game that, like, succumbed to bad marketing and is now just ridiculously rebounding. Let me just get into it. So, I bought No Man's Sky when it first came out, and the tutorial set the game up to be epic. Like, it was a really, really good tutorial. And then the game sucked. Like, you really didn't know what to do, and there wasn't a drive to complete the main quest, because there was no real side activities other than, like, going to a space station and trading and selling, making money that you really didn't use. Like, you had your money, but you never really used your money. It was almost just like you used it to buy oxygen and spaceship fuel. Like, it, it was bad. So, you know, this game now, though, it's slowly, it's still slowly, but it is becoming the multiplayer game that we all kind of thought it was going to be. You know, they added a lot of things like base building and vehicles that the vehicles go on land and the freighters and all this stuff and now they're implementing a multiplayer system. So the space anomaly now, it used to be just this hub for these quests that you did, right? Now, if you activate the space anomaly, you go and it's like the nexus and you see all these players. Like I, I didn't expect this, but it's amazing seeing another player in No Man's Sky that's not your friend. Like, it's crazy seeing all these random strangers running around in all their spaceships. Like, you know, you can't really look at them or trade with them or anything like that. You, you don't even interact with them, but just seeing them, seeing other people on this game is so cool. And you can do missions with strangers now. You can do missions together. Like, it's slowly kind of... No Man's Sky, when it first came out, it was kind of like an adventure about you. But as a game, I think it fits more together as a game about everybody. You know, like everyone doing stuff. You know, you can make it about you or you can make it about everybody. Because now, for me, I have like, for instance, my Class C freighter, my Class A spaceship, my Class A laser beam my suit that's getting ridiculously decked out with stuff and now I noticed that when I'm playing with like Austin my friend we can get more stuff done faster and it makes it more it makes the game go by faster playing with him like base building in no man's sky you know just building and then having being able to fly around with Austin and fighting sentinels with Austin and like, it's a lot more fun just with one other friend. Even just one other friend, I would say. And then we can go on missions together and set up our grand operations to, you know, become rich people, you know, with the mining and all of that. It's just a whole lot of fun, and I feel like No Man's Sky, you know, it had two routes it could have gone. It could They could have delved deeper into the single player, which they still could do. Or they could have done what they're doing now, which is delving deeper into multiplayer and keeping the players more connected. And I think that was a really smart decision to keep the players more connected, right? Because if you play No Man's Sky, it's, like, impossible to find other people's things. I've never found, like, just randomly on my own, playing the game, I've never found another person's discovery. Not even once. My friend Austin, I found his discoveries because we're in the same solar system all the time. And, you know, flying around to the same things. And he's uploading planets and I'm uploading planets. But, like, a random strangers thing? Uh-uh. Never, ever, ever found a random strangers thing. And I think I've been, if you include on the PC, I've been to, like, somewhere in between 25 to 50 solar systems. And even though the game is massive, and that's relative to the game zero, relative to me, the human being, that's a lot. I mean, 50 solar systems is a lot of solar systems for one person to deal with, right? And most of them, I just kind of went to them, landed on all the planets, and kept going. 
I noticed a couple balancing changes too. And it just, they took, they're slowly taking, not only are they adding in the multiplayer elements, but they're slowly taking the annoying parts of the game and getting rid of them. Like, they're, the inventory capacity, right? They've just made it so like everything's 10,000, basically. And that was so smart of them. So that way, you know, I'm not carrying two or three stacks of a thousand oxygen, I can just carry one stack of oxygen, and it's fine, you know? The game's still buggy. The game, you know, it's still... It doesn't hold my attention for as long, you know? Like, basically, the game holding my attention is based on how driven I am to achieve a goal. So, like, I had this goal of... I had this really big spaceship. I think it was Class A. It might be a Class S spaceship. I No, I think it's A. And it had double the slots of my normal spaceship. And I, t I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend my time, and I'm going to fix up this spaceship. Because I knew... Because I kept... I still kept running out of space, and I knew I wanted to focus on exosuit upgrades, right? That, that was my, my plan. And... I think I spent a total of 8 to 10 hours in the game, you know, doing all these side quests and stuff, but 8 to 10 in-game hours from d when I decided to fix the spaceship to the time that I fixed it, and it, it, it was fun, you know? Then it was like, okay, what do I do next, right? And I kind of want to just finish my base just, just to finish it, right? Like, I have this room that's really big, but it's not closed off. So I decided I was just going to do it just because I didn't really want to do it, and the game was boring, and I didn't really finish the room. But then I'm like, oh, I want to go explore and find a, an indium-based planet. You know, the blue, the blue stuff that gives you chromatic metal. And it's like, all of a sudden, the game's fun again, you know? So I think, you know, slowly... The way that the game introduces new things to you is really fast, really nice. And I think that once you... Once the game or you starts making you set goals and gives you things to do and you know you're picking things to do whether it's finding freighters exploring i think it it makes the game playable really well i think it it makes it really really playable and what's nice is that you can stop doing whatever you're doing at any point and switch to something else you know you can be i'm gonna discover 100 Solar systems. You get to like solar system three and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And you just switch to something else. You know, all the teleporters, all the freighter, you know, everything. It's just the game's coming together really nice. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen to it. Like I used to kind of be, oh, you know, No Man's Sky is kind of worth my 60 bucks now. And it's still, I don't, I, it's hard for me to judge how worth it this game is you know, as a $60 game, I, I don't, I don't know. I would say for me, I've gotten $60 of value out of it, but I can see for a lot of people they wouldn't, but, you know, I used to just be kind of like, oh, you know, the game's fun now, but now, you know, they could have stopped where they did. They could have stopped after implementing the multiplayer where you can invite other people, and they didn't. They, they keep going. And I'm excited to see what happens to this game in, you know, a couple years. You know, what happens on, you know, I'm a console player. So what the types of things they can do to benefit No Man's Sky on the next generation of consoles. You know, the Xbox, I don't even know what they're going to call it. They should just call it the Scorpio. I know they call it Scarlet. Just call it, call it like the Xbox 720 or something like that. So yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a comment. What do you think of No Man's Sky now? I'd like to, I'd like to know what you guys think of, of No Man's Sky. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.